If you've been invited to play at a night of worship as a guest electric guitarist, you want to put your best foot forward. Here are three bad habits you need to be aware of and should give up, not just for your sake, but for the sake of the band you're playing with. Let's get down to it. Meet the encounter. They're a committed group of brothers and sisters in the Lord who envision for every tribe and tongue to encounter God through worship and adoration. I had the immense privilege of serving with the Encounter music team led by worship leader Clovis at their inaugural worship summit. I was invited by music director Douglas, who's also the owner of the Amplify Studios podcast. You should really check it out for local Singaporean original worship songs, and I've linked it in the description box below. TK is the keyboardist, and fun fact, I've known him since he attended one of my classes during Circuit Breaker, and we've kept in touch ever since. Wow. Am I going to be on my YouTube video? I think you are. Hey guys, it's TK here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, I hold myself to a high standard of preparation when I get invited to play, because I know that if left to my own devices, I'll fall back into three very bad habits if I don't check myself. Stick around for all three, as the third one is the most important. Bad habit number one, assuming too much. When I was an engineer working on the manufacturing floor, we had this saying to promote employee safety during our operations. To assume is to make an ass out of you and me. Verbally double-checking, triple-checking, inquiring on operational status several times, if you didn't communicate, someone might get hurt from assuming something was done when it wasn't. While the stage is a lot safer in that you won't get physically hurt most of the time, I still carry this saying into the way I do ministry. Imagine showing up blind to the venue for rehearsal. Your gear may not be compatible for the sound that the music director is going for. Your parts might clash with the other musicians. Your pedal board may be too big for the stage. You may not even have the requisite equipment to connect to the venue sound system. All that can be avoided if you had just asked questions. The counter to the bad habit of under-communication is What part do you want me to play? Who's taking that instrumental? What tone do you want my guitar to have? Which guitar do you think is most suitable for my role? Then there are the equally important questions about the venue which you should be clarifying. What's the stage layout? How much space do I have in my corner? Where's the nearest power outlet and how far is it from my spot? Do I have to bring my own DI boxes? There's never one question too many. Always ask questions. Gathering this much information is invaluable not just for your decision-making process, but it also informs the worship leader, music director, and stage manager that you're someone who takes the events seriously and gives them honor. The next bad habit is for those of you who have a diva complex. Bad habit number two, being inflexible. Listen to these statements with an objective heart and tell me if these don't take you off. I can only play if the songs are in a certain key because I don't take the time to practice in the uncommon keys with flats and sharps and I'm too cheap to buy a good capo. I can only play if I can bring my 42-inch pedal board and my two campers. You need to give me that much stage space. One of the practical ways I truly believe we can exercise servanthood as electric guitarists is in crucifying our diva complex. Get it out of your heads. You're not a rock star. You're here to serve any and every way that you can. I originally wanted to bring my pedal board with the HX Storm and Plethora X5 so that every knob was accessible in case I needed to tweak on the fly, but it didn't have balanced XLR outputs. When it came to coordinating logistics, MD Douglas said it would be better if we didn't ask the venue for extra DI boxes, which are always in short supply. Rather than kick up a fuss, I decided that the best way to serve my team was to use a device that already had balanced XLR outputs, my Helix. Was it more cumbersome to carry? Yes, but the night wasn't about me, and since I had the equipment at my disposal, I should be open to use whatever gets the job done. Having a wide range of gear will help you be versatile enough to accommodate situations that may be completely out of your control. The counter to the bad habit of being inflexible is to be open, amenable, and trying to be ready for the unexpected. Short testimony here. I leave some guitars in office for recording or jamming purposes, and for some reason, I got the impression that I should take back my mono dual case that has my Yamaha AES-820 in it. I left my spare guitars in the car while I set up my Explorer for the evening. The reason why you see an Explorer in the footage is because it was there for rehearsals. But one hour before the event started, the robot tuners decided that I didn't need a high E string. I think God was giving me a heads up that I'll be needing that spare guitar, and so I was able to still set up and serve with the team. So, bonus tip regarding being prepared for the unexpected. Have spare strings with you, or better yet, 
a spare guitar. Which brings us to the next bad habit and the most important one of all. Bad habit number three, being underprepared. Raise your hands if this has been you. You come to rehearsal not knowing your parts and worse, you haven't heard the song before. I don't have time to listen to the songs. I'm too busy at work to practice beforehand. I let the Holy Spirit direct me as to what to play. I don't need to practice. Excuse us, excuse us. Excuses, and my daughter agrees. You can't play the songs if you don't know the songs. I want you to observe something about my corner of the stage. I'll let the footage roll and see if you can spot what's missing in my corner. Can you guess what's missing? The music stand. I memorized my parts, and this is nothing to brag about. I believe it's the minimum standard for musicians, especially for a long night of worship with a dedicated ministry time. You can't focus on working with the band and hearing out for the MD's cues and instructions if you're too busy trying to read your charts or worse, learning the song as you play. I'll let you in on the secret to memorizing your parts as an electric guitarist. It's about being able to play what you can physically sing and recognizing any patterns. For example, for the lead light in Here Again, which we did in C sharp, it's difficult to memorize if you have to think C sharp, F, G sharp, G sharp. F, D sharp. Instead, I sing the part out and try to recognize the inherent musical pattern. First, hum it. <laughs> then, recognize the intervals. Do, mi, so, so, mi, re, if sung in soft pitch, or using Roman numerals. One, three, five, Five, three, two. Knowing a little music theory goes a long way. One, three, five should immediately stand up to you as the major triad. To further help me memorize a part, I associate it with something I encounter in everyday life. One, three, five are familiar as announcement bells. The train on platform two will arrive in three minutes. Let me encourage you that memorizing your parts is not difficult, and if you can, take away the music stand you experience such a liberation to be able to make eye contact with your team members. So the counter to the bad habit of being underprepared is being prepared. Which brings us to the question of the day. Which bad habit do you struggle with the most? Are there others that I've missed? I'd love to hear your stories and opinions in the comment section below. Clovis, Alina, Douglas, TK, and everyone at the encounter, thanks for having me play at such an important event. I saw miracles happening in front of me and it brought back memories of a time and walking with Jesus was a lot simpler, a lot more direct and genuine. I've been challenged to let go and let God. I've been inspired to flow with the Spirit rather than dictate how He can move with my preconceived notions of ministry. Do check their ministry out. All links are in the description box below. Like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button to support my ministry and head on over to this playlist with ministry-related content that I'm sure you'll find useful. Do check it out and I'll see you there.